So thanks everyone for the opportunity to being here, presenting these uh, studies that we have done, uh, trying to get some value from the data that we have in the Swine Health Monitoring Project. So in this, in this talk, um, I want to I wanna present you some, some studies that we have done around summer outbreaks. And the first part is about a, a description of summer breaks in the, in the US. And then we're going to see another study which relates the outbreak season with the time to stability and see if there are any differences. So this, this talk is going to be around summer breaks, first summer breaks. So around Lehman time last year, uh, participants uh, approached us and they were concerned about summer outbreaks in, during the 2017 summer. And the feel was that uh, a higher number of breaks was occurring. So basically what, what we wanted to, once we received that concern, we'll say, okay, we'll look in the data that we have and we'll see whether really there is a higher number of summer breaks during this uh, summer. And also we want to see where these summer breaks occurred and, and are, are they located in a single zone or spread across the country. So pretty much only describing here summer breaks in the US. So we graphed the, the entire database that we have uh, from 2009 till the end of 2017. And in this database we have uh, 1,500 outbreaks in these nine years. And, and you can see here, this is just the number, right? So this increase is not due to a, a, a higher, it's, it's a higher number because also we have a higher number of, uh, of participants. So when we correct that data by the uh, population of farms that we have in each year, we can see that it's not really that we have a, a higher number, uh, is the proportion is pretty much the same with some years uh, higher incidence and some years lower incidence. 2013 and 14, one of the lowest that we have, which coincides uh, is, is the year of the PED epidemic as well. So back to summer outbreaks, in, in this entire database of 1,500 outbreaks, we have around 200 outbreaks that occurred during the summer and another 300 that occurred during springtime. So together we can, you can think about it like one third of the outbreaks occurring during spring and, su and summer and the other two thirds uh, occurring in autumn and winter. Still, still autumn is the season where more outbreaks are reported to us. So going deep into these summer breaks, these 200 summer breaks that, that we have, we wanted to see whether there is any temporal um, trend in this data. So basically we're, we're going to plot the incidence of summer breaks through time. And we, when we do that, we, we, we can see that there is not really any pattern here. The, the, the trend looks pretty flat and around 3.5% of south farms uh, have an outbreak each year. How does that compare to other seasons? Well, here we have summer. In spring and winter, uh, there are not really any pattern that I can see. Maybe 2015 was a, a high year for spring breaks, but it's not, it's, I, I wouldn't say that it's a, an increasing trend here or, or in winter. What, what, what something that, that is present in this data is that the number or the incidence of autumn breaks have been has been decreasing during the years, and we are seeing less autumn breaks. But we haven't been able to do the same with the breaks that occur in other seasons. So for, for the temporal part, we can say that there is no obvious increase in the percentage of summer outbreaks, and we, we can say pretty comfort, comfortably that 3.5% uh, of farms will have a break each summer. 
Now, we want to describe this data as well in space, in the geographic location. So here you have the dots of all, all, the, all, the, sum, all, the, all the breaks that we have, the, these 1,500 breaks across the U.S. Where do they are? When, when you see these uh, dots there, you cannot really uh, make a good inference because you just see dots everywhere. So then we can use these density maps that help us to identify, uh, identify areas uh, with where more breaks occur. And pretty much what you can see here is dense areas. So in dense areas, you have more purse breaks. Now we want to break this data in summer breaks. So where these summer breaks occur. And here you have the dots of, as well. And you can create this density map to show you where these summer breaks are occurring. So again, in, in high, high density areas. So these summer breaks, we, we're going to call them cases here, and we're going to try to do an exercise comparing cases and controls. Controls being purse breaks that occur in other seasons, not summer. So you ended up with these two density maps, one for summer for cases and one for north summer, the controls. And one, what we can do here now is to compare these two densities the same way that we will uh, uh, estimate a, a relative risk, dividing one, one for the other. So when, when we do that, and we have these um, two densities, this ratio, we can create this ratio or incidence uh, map of summer breaks, in which areas we have more summer breaks. So in, and, and, and we identify this area. I'm going to show you this map in a larger slide. So here, this area comes up with a higher risk of summer outbreaks. Uh, red, red here being a higher risk, blue being a lower risk. And we have some contour lines here to, to say that we have a, a significantly higher risk of summer break in this area. This area here also has an estimate that is higher, but it's not significant. The same here in, in, in North Carolina which is a blue, so it's a lowest, lower risk of uh, having a summer break, but it's also non-significant in this slide. So for, the, for this geographical part, we can say that um, we have uh, identified areas with the, that they have a higher risk of summer breaks, and, and these areas are uh, located in southern Minnesota and, and northern Iowa. Now I want, to, I want to pass to the second, second study that we have conducted using the MSHIM data. And, and in here, we are going to see the effect that the PERS outbreak has the season and which occurred with the time to stability, so the time to uh, win negative pigs. And, and we also heard some anecdotal reports that it's harder to achieve stability when the outbreak occurred during, during summer. So when, when we started this, this, this was the idea at the beginning, and we, we wanted to know whether stability really differed uh, in the different seasons uh, when, when, it, when it occurred. So time to stability, we have the, the, the definition here. So uh, this is the time from the outbreak or intervention to, to the time where the farm starts uh, uh, winning net negative peaks. And, and, and this is the whole camp um, status terminology and, and, and certain criteria that the farm must meet to, to, to be declared stable. So in this, in this analysis, uh, we use only data for, from six uh, participants and, and this data was a, a constrained from March 2011 to March 2017. And what they have special, these six uh, participants, is that the way that they test and they classify PERS status is a similar uh, um, between each, uh, among, among them. So it's, it's a similar way of classifying, and the, and, and the way that they do it is, is guided by the whole camp terminology.
So in, in, in this analysis, we have the, our, our outcome is the time from the outbreak to the time that they reported uh, stability to us in the, in the MSHIMP. And we grab a bunch of predictors, uh, being the main one of interest, the outbreak season, but we also have others like the RFLP of the pairs that was associated with the outbreak, uh, the intervention that was used, uh, the outbreak status, herd size, the system, um, the outbreak in which the pairs uh, outbreak occurred, whether, whether the farm was filtered or not, uh, whether there was a PED outbreak during the stabilization period, and also the history of the farm, whether this farm had a previous outbreak within a year. Here we conducted a survival analysis. So it, this, is, this is a technique used to, to model time, time to event, and this kind is time, in this case is time to stability. And we used the Cox proportional hazard model, model and we accounted for the effects of farm, of repeated outbreaks within the same farm, and also the system in, in the model. So for these six participants, uh, we have 161 pairs outbreaks uh, recorded. And these uh, were in 82 farms. The median is, uh, was two outbreaks per farm, uh, a bunch having only one, but some of them having a lot of outbreaks during this time period. This one is the uh, kaplan meyer curve, is a survival curve. So basically the way to interpret this, we, we start here with 100% unstable farms and as time progresses in weeks, some farms start achieving stability. So then the, the percentage of unstable farms starts decreasing in time. The median for this uh, data uh, was 41 weeks. So at 45, 41 weeks, 50% uh, of the herds uh, had achieved stability. This, we're taking the time from the outbreak to the last uh, PCR negative. So it's, it's not the first, it's not when they started testing, it's when they finished testing. So here we have the, or our six systems and the number of weeks that they, it took to reach stability. So we have difference uh, between the systems, even though they they are similar in the way they test and they're similar in the way they classify. Still, we can observe some, some differences. But where we, we observe the most difference is um, in two old outbreaks in the same farm. So we, we did this, this exercise to try to assess how different is the time to stability between two, old, two outbreaks in the same farm. And we have a mean row difference of 20 weeks. Of course, this, can, this, this time can be affected by a number of things, like the, as, as we will see, the season in, in which the outbreak occurred, or the RFLP, or the intervention. So this is just a row difference. It, that is not accounting for, the, for those effects. But still, when we put this in, in, a, in a model and we try to account for those effects, we still see that the, the ICC, the intraclass correlation, so how correlated are two outbreaks within the same farm is very low. It's only 1.2%. 1, 1 so in the same farm, we're having large differences in the time to stability. So back, back to our data, this is only six participants, right? And we're having this distribution of the outbreaks uh, this is the number of outbreaks that occur during autumn, winter, spring, and summer. So we have around 30-something outbreaks that occur during the summer. If we compare the time to stability in this uh, by season, you can hear eyeballing that there is a the time to stability tends to be shorter for breaks that occur during autumn and winter compared to the ones that occur during spring or summer. 
and it's a pretty it's a, it's a pretty large difference. Here we have the same Kaplan May curve, but it's uh, stratified by the season. So we start here again with 100% unstable farms, and we, as the time progresses, some farms start achieving stability. So for autumn and winter, here we can see that at this point they start falling pretty quickly, reaching stability, while uh, summer and spring breaks linger, and then they fall again. So we have this difference here that explain the the difference that we are seeing in, in time to stability. And this is a significant difference. One, one thing that these uh, curves uh, have in common, and, and, and looking at the data with the, with the team, really they start together, and, and they start falling pretty much the same until this point. And in this point, we are having a, a flat period of time in which farms are not achieving stability, and the same here in the spring, but it's a bit delayed. And, and I guess we can discuss a little bit more about it, but this flat period is, is a coincidental with winter, when the farm, so if the farm had the break in summer, it will progress in time here, and here winter arrives. And it seems that for, for, for these farms, for this group of farms, it's harder to achieve stability during winter. When winter finally is gone, then they start falling again. So here are the results for, of, the, of the model, the Cox uh, model. And we ended up with, with three predictors from, from, from the bunch that we have at the beginning that are significant, related with the time to stability. So in, in, the, in the first one, here we have the, the hazard ratio, so it's telling you if, if it is above one, it's telling you that these are achieving the outcome, stability, faster than the, than the, than the reference, that is summer. So we, winter and autumn breaks are farms that have breaks during winter or autumn are able to achieve stability uh, sooner than the ones that uh, have the outbreak during summer. And there is not really a difference between summer and spring breaks. Also the RSLP pattern uh, came up uh, significant. Here the reference is the uh, breaks that were associated with a 174 outbreak. And in this data, most RFLPs that we have here uh, were, so the farms that had the outbreak with these RFLPs achieved stability sooner compared to the ones that had an outbreak with a 174. And most of them are significant except for the 184 here and the 143 where we, we, didn't, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, see a significant difference even though the point estimate seems to be uh, favoring stability. So this will achieve stability sooner as well, but just the, we don't have the, the power to tell that the difference. And finally, we also observed that uh, farms that had a, an outbreak uh, within a year, so they ha had a, a history of having a purse break within a year, also were able to reach stability sooner than the ones that didn't have that history of an outbreak within a year. So in, in summary for, for this study, we observed that uh, farms that broke during summer took significantly longer to achieve stability compared to the ones that had the outbreak during, during winter or autumn. And also that the RFLP pattern seems to matter. We're seeing that uh, purse breaks that are associated with a 174 RFLP pattern uh, seem to um, take longer to achieve stability. So with that, I want to acknowledge uh, all the participants of this project. All this, all this uh, analysis couldn't be possible if we didn't have this, this data. And also to, to the Swine Health Information Center for all 
all the support. Thank you. I'll take any questions now.